right now on KHQ breaking news. Again, we are following breaking news. Standing by for Police Chief Frank Stroud. Well, let's go to Alex Rozier. Hey, Sean and Shelley. This morning we are now joined by Police Chief Frank Straub on KHQ Local News Today. Two shootings this morning, one officer involved, the other civilians, uh, both fatal. Chief. We are still just a little uh, ways away from uh, Police Chief Frank Straub addressing the media. If you're just joining us, uh, sometime about 1.15 this morning at Maple and Grace, there was a shooting that was fatal. That man who was involved uh, later died in the hospital. Uh, a second scene at the 22,000 block of West Charles and Nine Miles Falls this morning involved an officer. The person who was shot by the officer died. Frank Straub going to brief us now on exactly what happened. What can you tell us? And bear with us now as we uh, continue to wait for other outlets that are uh, in commercial break. But uh, the chief is uh, ready to address us this morning on the developments. Two shootings, both fatal. Again, Alex, as we stand by for the chief's press conference, we can update you at Maple and Grace 1250 this morning. And one man was shot dead in his mid 30s. From there, it led police to the Nine Mile Falls area. And what we can tell you is happening here is the chief has elected to wait for all three stations. Let's listen in. This morning at about one o'clock, Spokane police officers responded to a call of a pedestrian struck by a vehicle. That call was in the area of the 1500 block of West Grace Avenue. Upon arrival, Witnesses advised the officers that they had heard gunshots. Officers found a male victim laying in the street. He appeared to have been shot. The victim was transported to the hospital and he was subsequently pronounced dead. Spokane Police Department major crimes detectives believed that this was not a random shooting. Initial information indicates that the victim and the suspect were known to each other. Officers were following up on information in the West Grace incident, and that information led them to the 22,000 block of Charles Road. When they arrived at Charles Road, they attempted to contact the suspect from the earlier, earlier incident. Shots were fired by the officers. The suspect is deceased. It's important to note that the homicide scene on West Grace will be processed by the Spokane Police Department Major Crimes Unit. Further information regarding the West Grace incident will be released by the Spokane Police Department Public Information Office. The scene on Charles Road <clears throat> will be processed by the Spokane Regional Incident Response Team, commonly referred to as the SIR team and information regarding that incident will come from the SIR team. Once again, we see uh, a violent incident. We find a deceased individual, apparently deceased as a result of gunshot or gunshots. Officers quickly follow up on information at that scene and respond to Charles Road, where they are uh, looking for a dangerous individual who was just in, involved, as we believe, in a shooting. The officers confront that individual, and that individual is now deceased. I compliment the bravery of our officers. I compliment their very quick response to both the initial incident and then the follow-up, which led them to Charles Road. Clearly, it's a tragic incident when any individual loses their life. These incidents, both the homicide and the subsequent incident on Charles Road, will be investigated quickly, thoroughly, and objectively. As in the case of officer-involved shootings, the SIR team will do the officer-involved shooting incident, the second incident on Charles Road. The Spokane Police Department will not be making uh, additional comments on that investigation as per the protocol of the SIR team. We will comment on, when it's appropriate, uh, the homicide um, that started this whole thing this morning. Chief, the individuals who are involved in these incidents, with the exception of police, were they well known to police? Uh, we've heard rumblings of getting, 
it being gang related? Uh, it, right now, there does not appear to be any gang involvement. Um, I will say that both individuals were known to, to the police. You know, many people are watching the newscast this morning, waking up, seeing this, uh, hearing about the two different uh, deadly shootings. What do you have to say to people who might be a little worried about safety in the city? Well, what I can tell you is that we believe all the information that we have to gather, and remember it's now quarter to seven, this first incident started around 1.30, so things are happening as I'm standing here talking to you. Uh, we believe that both individuals in the first incident were known to each other. Um, so there is no reason um, for individuals living in that neighborhood or the broader community uh, to be in fear of, of their safety. Again, both individuals we believe knew each other. Um, that incident then carried over to Charles Road, uh, where one, we believe, the shooting suspect went. Uh, we went there to engage that individual, to, to speak with him, um, and unfortunately we ended up in uh, Chief, Chief Straub, can you tell us what information you had to, to trace that suspect to Charles Rose? No, I can't. I can't discuss that. And with the SHARE team, who will be the lead agency investigating it? Will it be sheriffs? Will it be WSB? I believe it's the uh, sheriff's uh, office that will, will lead this one, but as you know, the SHARE team uh, has members of the Spokane County Sheriff, the Washington State Patrol and the Spokane Police Department. It's a collaborative investigation led by, in this case, the Spokane County Sheriff's Department. Again, you've been watching a live news conference with uh, Police Chief Frank Straub. We will continue to follow this on KHQ as well as KHQ.com. And if you listen closely, two brand new pieces of information coming out of that news conference with the police chief. One, that it does appear that the victim and the suspect knew each other, and it does not appear to be a gang-related crime. We also understand that both the victim and the suspect were well-known to police officers as well. This is a live picture from Maple and Grace where the first shooting took place at about 12.50 this morning. One man found lying in the street from gunshot wounds. All right, right now we want to check on quick check of the forecast with Blake Jensen. Well, of course, lots of folks waking up with some light showers out there. You take a look right now at the Pacific Northwest satellite radar. You see most of that energy moving north northeast of Spokane and Coeur d'Alene. We got one little cell kind of right there over Coeur d'Alene, but most of that now isolated to the uh, northern panhandle. You see behind this first wave actually getting some clearing. So around Moses Lake, the Tri-Cities, you got some sun peeking through there, but still going to be seeing mostly cloudy skies the majority of the day in most areas. And by noon, another wave of showers expected to move on through. You still see mostly cloudy skies guys some filtered sunshine across central parts of the Columbia Basin after three o'clock though that chance for showers really decreases and dropping off and then you see the partial clearing that I even hinted at a little bit earlier as we go overnight tonight and into tomorrow now for tomorrow different models showing different things this one showing a chance for some more light very drizzly showers kind of like what we saw early this morning but others showing that we stay mostly dry so really not another another uh, re relatively minor event for you tomorrow could see some light showers otherwise not too bad 60s and 70s today light showers coming in once again early this afternoon and uh, again we've been following Matt Rogers all across the inland northwest this week and he takes us to yet another stunning location this morning Matt good morning Good morning to you, Blake, and welcome once again to Medellin Falls up in northeastern Washington, and you are looking now live at the Ponderé River, one of the, well, signature landmarks here, uh, if you will, in the area, and I'm joined once again by the mayor of Medellin Falls, Tara Leininger. Good morning once again, Good Mayor. Good morning, Matt. Let's talk about this river. Why does it look so, the color in this river is so distinct <laughs> compared to others? What's that all about? Look at that. That is the depth of the river. The uh -huh. green is just the depth of this beautiful canyon water, which flows north. Uh-huh. Uh, one of the rarities in our country is a river that flows north, but it is a glorious body oh. of water, and we love living on it. It really is. Hey, talk about this rock up there behind this, us. <laughs> this is Washington Rock, uh -huh. and Washington Rock is the largest freestanding rock in the state. Uh, it, people climb it, and... This whole and thing is a rock. It's a rock. It wow. is a giant rock, and so it's just a wonderful sort of landmark coming into our town. It's very cool. How's traffic? Can we walk across? We can walk across. Okay, we're, we're not going to get hit. Give you another look. In the last 10 minutes, we have seen two bald eagles. We've seen uh, goose. 
osprey. You say there even, even is a couple of peregrine falcons that are in the area, right? Uh, there, there are. They've been spotted on occasion, so that's a wonderful rarity. The wildlife up here is wonderful. Gail Pollock, who you met, one of our lions, had to stop for a moose this morning. <laughs> yeah, and talk about some of the other outdoor recreational activities up here in uh, Medellin Falls. When you're on a river, you've got fishing, you've got canoeing and kayaking. The wildlife watching is wonderful up here. Yeah. And then there's hiking. We have state forests. We have federal forests, the Colville National Forest. There are hiking, camping, you name it. You can do it up in, the, uh -huh. in, in this area. And there used to be some falls here, but because of the uh, <laughs> the dams that have been put in, uh, Medellin Falls doesn't really have any falls anymore. No, but that's but okay. The, but the high water that you saw today gives you an idea of where those yeah. falls once were. The water is very high right now. It well, is beautiful. It, it, a fascinating area here, and we really, really appreciate you sharing it with our viewers in Spokane this morning. Mayor, Mayor Tara Lining Really nice to meet you. Thank you so much. It is good so to much. meet you. And everyone come up and visit. We'd love to have you here. All right. So there you have it, Sean and Shelley. Uh, Medellin Falls, I tell you, it is absolutely stunning. Breathtaking scenery up here in the corner of northeastern Washington. Back to you. Matt Rogers, powered by your Inland Empire Toyota dealers. Right now on KHQ, breaking news. Again, we are following breaking news from three different locations this morning. I want to bring you all the latest information that we have. We begin with Katie Steiner, where this all began about 12.50 this morning at Maple and Grace. Katie? Good morning, Sean and Shelley. It all happened right here at Maple and Grace. Take a look. You can see that Major Crimes is here on scene. They are processing this scene right now, trying to figure out exactly what happened. Started at 12.50. A man shot another man in the chest. When fire crews got here, a witness was actually performing CPR. Then they took that victim to Deaconess Hospital. And that's where he died. The victim actually lived a block away, and people inside of that house told officers who shot the victim. They gave him his name, and that's what led them to Charles Road. And that's where that officer involved shooting happened with that suspect. Now we don't know the name of either the suspect or the victims that will be released by the medical examiner's office. But I can tell you that the victim is in his mid 30s. Right now, the police are interviewing people and major crimes is on scene right here at Maple and Grace. But now we're going to toss to Kalai, who was at Charles Road at that officer involved shooting. Kalai, what can you tell us? Well, Katie, we know that after the shooting there, uh, officers followed the suspect up to this rural area about 20 miles northwest of where that first shooting took place. The road here on Charles is blocked off as investigators uh, search that home. Frank Straub telling us just moments ago that the when, share, uh, when officers got here, they tried to contact the suspect. Shots were then fired, and then those officers then shot and killed that suspect. He tells us that the Spokane Incident Response Team is now investigating this crime scene. Let's toss it now to Alex Rozier, who is there, uh, just interviewed Chief Straub with the details of this, these two shootings overnight. Uh, again, we're, Alex is live down from the Public Safety Building. What we can tell you, uh, Chief Straub speaking just a moment ago, saying that both the victim and the suspect did know each other, and they were also well known to police officers. But it does not appear to be a gang-related shooting. That was the Chief's words just a few minutes ago. We can tell you we're keeping all our crews at the different locations. Let's go back to Alex now. Hey, yeah, Sean and Shelley, I think the main thing that we need to drive home this morning is that the chief did say that he does not believe that this is a random shooting, that there, that this was, uh, there's no longer a threat to this community. Uh, he could not say much about the officer involved shooting that will now be handled by the Spokane County Sheriff's Office. I did just try and reach out to Craig Chamberlain, their public information officer, but was unsuccessful in doing that. There's a number of questions that we still do not know, and one of those was, why they decided to fire. Obviously, there was some threat to the officer. We don't know what that was, if there was, uh, was, uh, if there was a weapon pulled or some type of something there. Uh, we will continue to learn more details. We don't know a lot about either victim other than that they were well known to police. Both the victim and the suspect in these shootings this morning. We're going to continue to track this story before 630 this morning. Two shootings, both fatal right here in Spokane. Back to you. We do want to mention also we did receive a call into the newsroom. The Nine Mile Falls School District not affected by the shootings. School will go off as scheduled. But you will be affected by the rain today. <laughs> yeah. yeah, we do have some showers out there right now around the metro area. Those tapering off, but look to see another wave moving through early this afternoon. And then you see the six day shower 
showers really in the forecast for us through the weekend. Tomorrow looking to stay mostly dry, but again, a very, very light spotty showers, a possibility. So uh, again, a very interesting six day for us, wet six day. All right, it has been breathtaking to see Medellin Falls yeah, this morning. We leave you with some great pictures from Matt.